What's up guys, this is Alex and today I'm working on my first big band jazz track. I thought it would be a cool idea to walk you guys through this process as normally I talk about epic orchestral music but today we're going to do something different. I'm using the library's Swing and Swing More by Project Sam which are amazing for this genre of music. So, how do you write a big band jazz track? Or rather, how am I writing it? Well, the first thing I started from is to pick a drum loop that gives me a sense of groove that makes me want to compose big band jazz. So this one, I love this one, it's from Swing, it feels like those sorts of accents are very jazzy from the get-go, so they kind of dictate the nature of the track you're about to write. Swing from Project Sam is full of beautiful drum loops that are used all throughout this track. The second thing we need, this being jazz, is a cool bass line that follows the rhythm of the drums, maybe on double basses or bass guitar. It kind of plays with the drums, but it's quite boring. This is jazz. Jazz is a very colorful genre, full of expression. Even the bass lines need to be articulated. Thus, I kept that rhythm and added a few notes. That's more like it. And now variation. Another thing we need to make this very jazzy is to use cool harmonies. Jazz harmony is a complex subject that I'm not a master of. So I stuck to using seventh chords and using chords with a bass note that is different from the root as a way to make this more colorful. What I mean is, for example, say you have a C major chord like this. If you wanna make it more jazzy, you can add a seventh, which is in this case, is a B which is a very colorful sound because the distance between B and G and C is this. So when you add a seventh, that's cool. You can also add a minor seventh, which is like the B flat. And if you do, that's pretty jazzy. Another thing you can do is, as I said before, uh, I don't know if this is correct or whatever, but using a bass note, but what if instead of using C, you use D, which is not in the, in the C major chord. That's pretty cool. For example, if we use all the concepts I just explained, we can have, I don't know, a chord progression that goes something like. And then I also follow the variation in the second half with them. Feels like it's tricking you in going into different places and then it resolves to the chord that you expected. I did that instinctively, so that's why it's kind of weird to explain, but if you want to make things more jazzy, dare to add that extra note that you wouldn't add and see how it sounds like. That's what jazz is based on, improvisation. What we need on top of this is melody, and I used the melody from a game called Persona 5, scored by Shoji Meguro, a Japanese composer who's freaking amazing, and I put the melody on vibraphone and piano, so it sounds like this. up on an octave. And the cool thing about this melody is that when it rests, the bass lines and the chords are moving, like here. So it's a bit of dialogue between the instruments there. Very important for jazz. Now it's time for the big band stuff. You want to use something like bass trombones or tenor trombones to complement the bass line. That's pretty cool the way you dance here, you know, the bass line that doon, 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 while the trombone is like da -ga -da 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 -da. So you want to play with the rhythm in that way. And sometimes that means that I, I change from using quarter notes to actually using triplets or, you know, six tuplets, whatever. You have to do that, especially in the, in the variation. What you want on top of that is to add saxophones. As you notice, like here, they're kind of harmonizing, but they're kind of quite boring right now, aren't they? What you want to use is articulations that make them sound a bit more alive. I added this sort of thing. Something like that. Those are called like, this is a crescendo and this is a fall. It's an articulation you find in Zwing. This is why Zwing is an amazing library. You cannot do this stuff with like Metropolis Arquan or a library that is symphonic because it doesn't have this jazzy articulation. So another thing I did to make the, uh, these saxophones a bit more interesting is I added notes on the higher octaves as they go on and they added this trumpet doing this. Like, bah, bah, that sort of vibrating note. I don't remember what articulation that is, but it's in, it's in swing and it adds a lot of color. So all of that together thus far sounds something like that. That is all well and cool, but now the melody kind of changes and I want this to still sound fresh. And what you want to do when you want to melody sound fresh is to change the rest of the arrangement. So the arrangement went from what we heard before to something like this. Now. That's 
As for the melody, another thing you want to do to keep it interesting is to change the instruments that are playing it, just like in epic orchestral music, as I say all the time. In this case, it was playing on vibraphone and piano before, and now I moved it to clarinet and solo saxophone. Okay, that's pretty interesting. However, I find the melody like that sounds a bit naked, not that much interesting in terms of like jazz, you know, sound. What it needs is a bit more color, and that means it needs more harmony, so I added this counterpoint using another sax, in this case a tenor sax. That's more interesting. Okay, so I think we have one cool minute of jazz music. This is not a completed arrangement yet. I still need to perfect it and humanize it and stuff, but I think we can hear the impact of what we've been working on.